Hello and welcome to this video on trade unions. So in this video we're going to look at the role of trade unions in the labour market. So let's start off with what we mean by a trade union. A trade union is an organisation formed to represent and improve workers' conditions and pay. And they use a process called collective bargaining, where essentially they say that what you agree with the union applies to all workers. And if you don't give that to us as a group, then none of us will work. So we're really bargaining for wages and conditions en masse rather, as, rather than as individuals. So the unions here have an important role in setting the pay and conditions rather than you individually in a pay negotiation with your employer. Some examples of uh, unions include the National Union of Teachers. So what are the key roles for the trade union? What are they trying to achieve? Well, the workers within the union normally pay a certain amount to help the union operate. The union then appoints representatives who represent the workers in discussions, negotiations with the employer. The key roles are to protect and improve wages, protect workers against being unfairly dismissed, try and improve working conditions in the job and promote better training and education in the workplace. And they're also often involved in protecting pension rights for members. So here are some examples of some unions. We have the National Union of Journalists. We have uh, teachers unions. We have fire workers unions as well. Trade union membership in the UK has declined a lot in recent years. So this chart here shows the percentage of employees that are members of a trade union. We can see it decreasing over time to just below a quarter. There are several reasons behind this. One has been the impact of legislation. Government has passed many laws that make it slightly harder now to be a, a, an effective uh, union. For example, unions now need a greater turnout of their members in order to go on strike, so their powers have been uh, reduced. The rise in flexible labour markets, so things like short-term contracts, zero-hour contract, part-time working and self-employment means it's less likely that people are part of a union. Also, we've seen deindustrialization, so service sectors uh, tend to have less union membership traditionally than the heavy industry seen in the past. Also, the impact of globalisation has reduced the bargaining power of employees. It's harder for a, a workers' union in the UK to demand higher pay when now an employer can easily relocate production overseas where labour is much cheaper. Transnational companies increasingly have monopoly power in this respect. So here are some of the biggest unions in the UK. Again, we can see the Teachers Union, um, we can see uh, the General Workers Union, and we can see the union represents sort of uh, basic retail sector jobs as well. Now let's have a look at the impact of union activity on wages and jobs. Let's have a look first of all at perfectly competitive labour markets. So here we have the demand for labour in this market, and we have the labour supply. And if we assume this is in perfect competition, we have a wage rate W1, a level of employment E1, and that would be the wage rate that would be taken by firms. If trade unions bid, uh, bid up employers to pay a higher wage, so they say we won't work for any wage less than W2, this obviously puts the market into disequilibrium. At this higher wage, firms will only want to demand E2 level of workers yet a greater amount of workers would actually be willing to work at this wage rate. So what this creates within the market is less total employment and a lot of excess supply of labour. So we do get some higher wages for some workers, but actually we get a lot of lost wages from the contraction in employment that we see. So whether or not higher wages achieved by unions from collective bargaining leads to increased total income depends on what happens to the employment of people in this particular labour market. But as economists here, because the light blue area is slightly smaller than the darker blue area, we would suggest here that in perfect competition, the impact of unions uh, doesn't have a positive impact. It reduces employment and also creates um, excess supply of labour, reduces wages, uh, wage income.
Now let's have a look at the impact of trade union activity in monopsony. So here we can see an imperfectly competitive labour market where the firm, the individual firm, has some uh, uh, wage setting power. So currently the firm will choose to employ E2 level of workers where the marginal cost of labour meets the marginal revenue product of labour. But to attract E2 workers, they only need to charge a wage of W3. Suppose the union, through the process of collective bargaining here, enforces a wage of W coal for collective. This means that the firm cannot employ workers at a wage rate below W coal here. So effectively, this becomes the marginal cost of labour up until the point where we meet the labour supply curve, at which point the marginal cost of labour starts to rise with the wage rate. So effectively, up until this point, we almost have like a perfectly competitive labour market where the marginal cost is the same as the average cost of labour up until this point. So we're kind of re removing some of the monopsony power from the monopsonist. So in this situation, the new profit maximising level of employment for the firm, where MCL with the collective wage bargaining meets the marginal revenue product, becomes this point here. So the firm would now choose to employ E3 level of workers, and in order to do that, would have to pay them the collective wage rate W coal. So the total wages that are being paid out now to the workers as a result of collective bargaining is actually greater. We have more workers being employed and at a higher wage rate because the union here has in effect removed some of the monopsony power from the large employer. So we would use this argument to argue that trade unions can be effective, can be desirable when we have imperfectly competitive labour markets, in particular where we have monopsony, where we have one large firm that is dominating employment in the industry, which is often why we would suggest that a national union of teachers, a national union of fire workers, a national union of soldiers would be acceptable. So let's have a look at an evaluation to finish off. On the plus side for trade unions, they reduce the possibility of discrimination and prevent employers from exploiting workers using monopsony power. In some areas, trade union activity might improve working conditions and as a result, improve productivity. So there might be a win-win for firms. Disadvantages, the higher wages they try and impose can often cause labor surplus and reduce employment. The increased cost of wages may make products less price competitive or may reduce consumer surplus through higher prices for consumer products. And it also may just kind of destroy their own role by, by collective bargaining and trying to increase wages. This creates an incentive for firms to substitute labour for capital, move to more capital intensive production, thus removing their need for further workers in the future and decreasing the level of employment. So in this video, we've looked at the role of trade unions and how they impact the labour market. That's it. Thanks very much for listening.